Welcome to Small Secrets of Vedic Astrology series. The question for today is, what is the difference between Krishna Paksha Moon or Shukla Paksha Moon? Is there any difference? And is it true that Krishna Paksha Moon becomes malefic in nature? In order to find the answer for this question, you need to firstly understand who the moon truly is. Both in Vedic astrology and tantric traditions, moon was always perceived as a form of divine mother, goddess herself. And therefore the path of the moon through the zodiac is the path of goddess herself, while changing phases of the moon represent the different moods which Devi goes through on her way of self-discovery. And Goddess, being Divine Mother herself, can never be malevolent in nature. She might be sometimes a bit more strict with her child, but she can never be a bad mother. So let us try to understand her in the form of the Moon a little bit better. Titi, or lunar phase, is nothing else but the relationship between Sun and Moon on our sky, which is a symbolic relationship between Shiva, the spirit, and Shakti, the nature. When Moon is waxing in Shukla Paksha and becoming brighter and brighter each day after the new Moon, visually on our sky it looks like as if Moon is moving away from the Sun, as if Shakti is moving away from Shiva. She moves away from him into the world of Maya or illusion to rediscover her true nature and to learn how to shine her own light fully. This is why Shukla Paksha Moon is addressed as Goddess Lalita Tripurasundari. Lalita means the playful one, while Tripurasundari means the most beautiful in the three worlds. As Tripurasundari, Goddess becomes more playful, and so does her mind. Shukla Paksha Moon is more curious to play in the world of matter and discover itself, also through sensual pleasure. Senses itself are represented by five flowery arrows in Lalita Tripurasundari's hand. This is why purely from material perspective, it is true, Waxing Moon or Shukla Paksha Moon is going to be more generous to us in terms of our experience of pleasure, comfort, love, and prosperity, as it represents the increasing growth of our sensory experience. Krishna Paksha Moon, on the other hand, is not going to be so generous to us in terms of material pleasures. When Moon is waning during Krishna Paksha, the Goddess is in the mood of longing for Shiva, as the Moon seems to slowly move closer and closer to the Sun on our sky. The feeling of longing, incompletion and dissatisfaction arises. Yet the very same dissatisfaction, paradoxically, is bringing us much closer to discovery of our true nature and reunion with the spirit. And the closer the goddess in the form of the moon moves towards Shiva, the sun, the more intense and fierce she becomes, as she is now facing the sun, heading towards it and getting blinded by its rays. During New Moon, Moon is literally combusted or burned by the blazing rays of the Sun. And thus, Goddess, in this form, relieves every month her story of self-immolation as Sati. And every month she is also reborn as Parvati, when Moon becomes visible on the sky again. Krishna Paksha Moon loses its rays and luster with every step of this journey. Unlike in Shukla Paksha, where it keeps growing and increasing its light. But along with losing some of its light, qualities and parts of its own identity on its way in Krishna Paksha, Moon or the mind is also going through an intense self-purification process of abandoning its own ego and limited sense of identity. This is why Krishna Paksha Moon is addressed as Goddess Kali, the remover of the ego, 
the one who opposes the material process of evolution, but supports our spiritual process of involution. This is also why usually Shukla Paksha or Waxing Moon is by its nature more extrovert and turned towards the external world, while Krishna Paksha or Waning Moon makes the mind naturally more introspective and introverted. As Tripura Sundari, Goddess supports our material progress, while as Kali, she supports our spiritual progress. But can we really say that any of them is better than the other? It is true, as Mother Kali, Goddess is more challenging and will keep challenging our ego more. But once you know that her only purpose is to make you evolve spiritually and burn your karma faster, so you can reunite with your spiritual nature and rediscover your true potential faster too, can you really call it a malefic influence? In the material world, we always perceive everything in terms of duality. We divide life experience itself into good and bad, pleasurable and uncomfortable. The moon itself, with its waxing and waning phases, reminds us about this duality of our own mind. But one thing we tend to forget often is that just because something is challenging or uncomfortable, it doesn't necessarily mean it is bad. Because the very same planetary influences which are supportive for material progress are often opposing spiritual progress and vice versa. So is really Krishna Paksha Moon so much worse than Shukla Paksha Moon? I will let you answer this question for yourself. So thank you so much for watching and being with me today. If you would like to learn in greater depth about the sacred dance of sun and moon through moon's phases and different moods of the goddess that she goes through with changing phases, you can read about it in my book Journey with the Moon. Journey with the Moon is more than 300 pages dedicated exclusively to lunar phases, titis, and understanding them both from astrological and spiritual perspective. You might also like to consider joining me on my Navagraha course, especially the Chandra module, to learn more about the Moon. You have all the links below. Namaste.